Traders are getting ready for tomorrow's big announcements. Of course, we're looking at a uh, adjustment, a potential adjustment, or an announcement about a policy adjustment and the uh, rate set by the FOMC. So. Uh, right now, traders have actually cooled off quite a bit on whether there is a likelihood for a rate hike. Uh, and I see a lot of consensus numbers are that it's going to be left alone, 2%. Which is, uh, is, so that'll be interesting. I think that there are very few um, announcements that have a higher likelihood of a bit of a surprise than the one that we're going to get tomorrow. So it is one that we want to be prepared for. Uh, which is actually the topic of conversation today. So I wanted to look at a couple of opportunities that I'm preparing for and how I would analyze as to where those opportunities may go in the near term should a breakout occur, uh, which a catalyst for that breakout could clearly be a surprise uh, uh, either in the policy announcement itself or in the comments that come out around the announcement itself. So there could be, uh, could make for a very volatile day. Now I'm starting actually a discussion looking at the 30 day Fed funds. Uh, this is the composite, it's a continuous futures contract. Uh, this is traded on the uh, Board of Trade in Chicago. And uh, what you'll notice is, the, the, the takeaway here by the way, is uh, investors recently have been bidding up the Fed funds rate futures. So what that means is that they're actually, since, uh, since the market hit a bottom on the 13th, they're estimating that there is a lower probability for a rate hike. A lower, ra uh, lower readings here means a higher rate. Higher readings means a lower rate. So uh, as you can see, the base, the base over here is out of 100. So it's kind of inverse to what you would, uh, uh, to, the, to the Fed funds rate itself. So as traders have been bidding this up over the last uh, week or so, we've, we've seen a lot of analysts coming around and saying, oh, no, we're, we're no, now we're expecting 2%, which is not unreasonable. However, if we obviously if we get a surprise, and even if the policy announcement comes out at 2%, what are, what's investor reaction going to be? Well, there's two consolidation patterns that I'm watching very closely. Uh, they're both on the majors and I think could be very interesting. Let's talk a little bit about how we forecast where they might go. Now the first one is here on the Euro US dollar which has been forming just a really classic consolidation pattern. So we kind of connect the dots here along the top and bottom. This is a uh, pattern that a lot of traders including myself have been watching for a little while. We continue to resist a breakout but we're just bumping up against that upper resistance level. So it could be very interesting. Um, should a breakout occur, here's how I would approach the whole problem of, well, where is it likely to go? So I, I love to use Fibonacci's for this, and I have a good example of how this has worked in the past uh, here in the second opportunity we're going to look at. But what I do is I find the highest point and the lowest point of the consolidation pattern. So that would be the, uh, the peak to valley from April to May. That gives me an initial retracement level or projection level of 161.8 right up here at about 64.71, which is very high. Uh, but a breakout to that level uh, would not be uh, unreasonable, certainly, and is only about 400 pips above the high that was set in April. So provided that a breakout does in fact occur, which is that's the big if, uh, that's where I would be looking to uh, set my initial targets and uh, to try to analyze, well, how much risk am I willing to take based on that potential upside? So it gives me a little bit of an idea as to where might the market go and, uh, and, and therefore is the reward, is the potential reward worth the uh, potential risk? How long might it take to get to that level? How far away is it? Uh, this, in, in fact, where the market is so far away, this is a nice opportunity for an options play uh, because it can withstand an option, a long option contract, a call in this example, can withstand uh, some of the uh, whipsaws that may occur after a breakout uh, that might otherwise stop uh, stop you out. So it could be, a, it, obviously, both approaches work, either spot or an options contract, but uh, uh, where the market is likely to uh, be pretty volatile on the breakout, uh, that, that may be the preferable choice as uh, stops are not as critical with an option contract. You can, you can only lose, in fact, exactly what you invested or what the option cost. So the second one that I'm watching very closely here is the dollar yen. 
and uh, where the dollar, uh, it's been forming this little bull flag here, it's pretty tight consolidation, a uh, bit of a downtrend in that consolidation against the prevailing trend, which is to the upside. Uh, we're like the euro, we're up against an upper level of resistance. So the market could easily break out here, but where is it likely to go? Well, there's a couple of things that we can do. Uh, I'm going to zoom out to show just historically how this is how this has played out, so we get some uh, ideas about how we might uh, project prices from uh, the potential breakout here. There's a similar consolidation area that occurred in through May and part of June, uh, right here in the 102 to 105 range. Applying a retracement here over the, again, going from the highs to the lows, gave us a pretty good target level of about 107.80, which is, uh, in fact, where the market has paused for a consolidation. Now, there's a second level up here, 261.8, which is not a bad way to, uh, it, as the consolidation, again, it, it occurs here at 161, if we get a breakout, that is exactly where I would place my next uh, profit target. So a, a breakup above this level, I would expect it to go to 261.8 as my next uh, as my next level of consolidation or likely resistance, which is at about 110.68. So we have about um, 300 uh, 300 pips or so to the upside potential here. This kind of analysis can be repeated over and over again, and it really doesn't matter what direction the trend is going. So, for example, when the prevailing trend was clearly to the downside starting in uh, uh, the end of the, the third quarter of last year, uh, this consolidation that occurred, we had this uh, uh, rising wedge, if you will, that was occurring between January and February of this year. Well, we apply the same thing from the low to the high. It projects a couple of important levels for us, so that on the breakout, uh, from that consolidation, which occurred uh, uh, here in the middle of, uh, in the or towards the end of February, as you can see, we can say, well, all right, we expect our first consolidation or target level to be at about 161.8%, and then again, we s suspect that the market will consolidate at 261.8 should the market break out here, which is exactly what we saw with the consolidation uh, at this level in. Um, uh, late February, early March, and then again in mid-March, we saw another consolidation and finally or a V reversal uh, here at the 261.8%. So from a longer term trader's perspective, this can be very helpful because it can help us understand, well, what kind of strategy should I use? If the, if the move looks shorter term, shorter distance, an outright spot contract is probably the way to go. If the move looks like it's far enough away that it may take uh, weeks, uh, if not months to flush out, then uh, it may be an opportunity for a longer term option where I can withstand some of the inevitable whipsaws a little bit easier uh, than with the outright uh, spot contract. So in either case, a lot of it obviously depends on just your own personal preference and trading style, uh, risk tolerance, etc. But it gives you a little bit more basis to start to understand, well, where do I really suspect that the market might go? whether I am dealing with a downtrend such as we are here or we're looking at a shorter term uh, uptrend such as we have been since March.